Today we'll take a look at Teleport's Kubernetes Access, where you can consolidate identity-based access to Kubernetes clusters across all environments, meet compliance requirements, and have complete visibility into access and behavior. Let's log into the Teleport proxy and add a Kubernetes cluster. We're going to log in via our GitHub SSO integration, so no passwords or secrets used. Teleport integrates seamlessly with your existing identity platform and gives you a single sign-on for all of your Kubernetes clusters. After a user completes the SSO authentication flow, Teleport then issues a short-lived certificate to that user. Let's add a simple Minikube cluster using the resource wizard. So I'm going to go to Kubernetes and add Kubernetes. Click on Kubernetes, and it's two steps. Step one is to add the Teleport agent chart to your charts repository. So I'm going to copy this command, and I'm going to head over to my EC2 instance that's running my Minikube cluster. So let's paste that command, and my chart's been added. Second, we'll generate a command to automatically configure and install the teleport agent. So I'll call the namespace teleport, and I'll call the cluster minikube dev. And when I click next, it's gonna generate a YAML file with my configuration, with values including my token, proxy address, cluster name, and then a helm install command to install the teleport agent. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna run this command, and hit enter. And now if I go back to my wizard, it will automatically detect that new Kubernetes cluster. And you see here I have the green light, so it's successfully detected your new Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to head back to Resources and Kubernetes, and you see my Minikube dev cluster is listed. Now that's one way to add a Kubernetes cluster to Teleport. Another way is that you can also set up auto-discovery with Kubernetes clusters hosted on major cloud providers to simplify scaling without the overhead. So using the clusters API, Teleport's discovery service identifies and makes available Kubernetes clusters based on label matches that you set up in Teleport. And clusters that get deleted or no longer match the filtering labels will also be dynamically removed. So for example, this discovery service here for GCP has two matchers. It will dynamically detect all clusters, note the two stars here, in the US East 1 region. And then there's another matcher that detects all clusters in the US East 2 region. So all clusters in region 1 and region 2 will be detected and registered in Teleport. And you'll see my example here with the EKS test cluster. I have a discovery service set up to match the labels of ENV dev. So if I added another cluster, with those labels, it would automatically be detected here in Teleport. Now to connect to the cluster, just click Connect. And here we have a couple of steps that sends us to the command line where we will use kubectl. So first, we need to log into the cluster using TSH, which is Teleport's CLI tool. So let's do that. And I can list my clusters, TSH, cube, ls. And from here, I can switch back and forth between cluster access. As I log into a cluster, the contexts within kubeconfig are automatically updated, streamlining multi-cluster management. So I can type tsh cube login, and let's do minikube dev. And my kubeconfig is updated, and I can use kubectl. kubectl get pods. And now if I want to jump over and do work on the EKS cluster, it's as simple as TSH cube login, EKS test cluster, and my cube config inserts are updated again. But not everyone should have access to all clusters, right? Well, Teleport has an RBAC system in place to manage who has access to what. Now, I have access to all clusters, but can easily create roles to limit this, like by label. Maybe this role only allows its users to access dev clusters. And Teleport offers more granular RBAC controls down to the Kubernetes API groups, resources, and verbs. We can also kubectl exec into pods, and when that session is initiated, not only can you view audit events related to that session, but you can actually replay the session to see the actions performed. If we go to Management and Audit Log, we can see all of our activities. So here you can see the session I initiated. So user has ended a session on Kubernetes cluster Minikube dev, and I can actually play it back. To see the commands that I executed. And as always, all kubectl commands are logged as well. So here you see my user received a 200 from a get pods request on the Minikube dev cluster. And you can click details for more information. And if you really wanted to tighten things down, you can enable per session MFA, which requires MFA for each kubectl call. And the scope for this can be cluster-wide or per role. So in my role, I can set that to true to require it, save the changes, and let me log back in to get a fresh certificate.
And now for each cube cuddle call, I'll have to confirm my MFA. So let's get config maps. To do so, I have to touch my security key. Let's list pods. And again, I'll have to tap my security key. And I'll have to do this for every call that I make. Finally, an administrative command like kubectl exec can be reserved for those who request it temporarily. Teleport's just-in-time access requests allow administrators to only allow certain actions or access based on a user's requesting that privilege temporarily and it being approved by an administrator. So here I've logged in as a user named Alice. Alice has a role that allows her to view pods in the production cluster. So she can log into the prod cluster, she can get pods, but she cannot exec into a pod. And here's the error code saying Alice cannot create resource pods exec. Great, but every now and then Alice needs to exec into a pod to do some work on the servers. So with teleport, she can request temporary access to be approved by an administrator to elevate her privilege to do so. For that, Alice can type TSH request create. The role she wants to request is Kubernetes prod admin. And she can also give a reason, uh, need to update a package. And she'll request temporary access to that role. And now an administrator can go to access requests and review requests and see her pending request. I can click view and approve it. I can put a message if I want and click submit review. You can also integrate this process with third party chat ops tools like Slack. So you'll see the request came in here. I can click the link to approve it which I've already done. So if I click reply, you'll see my approval in the reply. Now back on Alice's side, approval received, getting updated certificates, and Alice has access to the Kubernetes prod admin role for 53 more minutes. And now when she tries to exec into a pod, she's able to. So Teleport provides that just-in-time privileged access for Kubernetes clusters and all of the other infrastructure that it helps you manage. Now it's your turn to download Teleport and add your first Kubernetes cluster. Get started with their Community Open Source Edition or start a 14-day free trial of our cloud-hosted Team Edition. You can find answers to many other questions at goteleport.com or in our Slack community at goteleport.com slash Slack. Thank you for watching.